on current affairs. Areba, many thanks for making time for us this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, there are many who question whether when the Jubilee Vice Chairman speaks, should he be taken seriously? From an analytical point of view, should he? I, I think the Jubilee Vice Chair is not an ordinary person, and, and that is why whatever he speaks is eliciting a lot of emotions. The, the Jubilee Vice Chair is not just an ordinary man in the streets in Nyeri or an ordinary person in the streets in, 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 in Kisumu. You see the kind of uh, emotions he has elicited with his statements, and this is what exactly he was after. You, you know, in politics, uh, it's never true until it's denied. Until people really come out and say, no, 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 this is our position, then no, there's something. So, so um, there is something that the Jubilee Vice Chair is trying to achieve, whether by himself or whether uh, um, representing a cluster of people. And you see the conversations have started. Everybody right now is responding to the Jubilee Vice Chair. And, and when you say he could be representing a cluster of people, yes. there's often the question as well of whom is he speaking for? Who, who is he speaking for? Um, or who could he be speaking for? Uh, when a dog barks, I think you look for the owner. And, and in this particular instance, the owner will come out in, in due course. As of the moment, we cannot really uh, be able to tell indeed who he represents. Because even from where he comes from, um, there are people who have come out to distance themselves from the conversation. So in, in due time, as, as time goes by and as the political arena keeps on changing, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we will see what Murade was saying and who he was representing. But, but, but my point was that um, the kind of conversation that I've started now, everybody virtually is responding to Murade. Uh, Akinadis Masbaraza from Western, the likes of Chera Gay uh, from, from, from the Rift Valley, mm -hmm. everybody now has their guns blazing against Murade. And uh, did, you, did you expect or foresee such conversations coming at such a time when Jubilee has just won their second term in office? barely a year plus a month now? I, I think what you need to appreciate is that in Kenya we are constantly in, in a political environment and we are constantly uh, trying to make the next move. Kenya is the only country where a joke goes that uh, when you're celebrating once you've been elected, you say, hey, thank you for electing me. Remember next time I'm going to buy. So the conversations have already started. So I'm not really shocked that uh, they have started. W w w what I'm keen to look at is then uh, how does the political environment now get to change with Murathi's statements? And is that political environment taking shape as early as now, the 2022 <laughs> presidential of course, I mean, the elections. 2022 election uh, and the political environment took shape as soon as the Jubilee came into power in the first instance. Mm -hmm. look, look at 2017, the clip you just aired, the president saying, let me finish my 10 years, let's get my deputy president take the 10 years. In that, when the Jubilee team came into power, they already had a roadmap on post 2027. So, so that roadmap now, we can be able to see that it's being, in a way, the conversation is starting on how to alter it. And, and, and you know, uh, what we need to understand is that political promises are there, there to be broken. They're not there to be kept. So, so um, as to how far this political promise is going to be, um, to, to be broken, it's only time that we'll tell. But the fact is, we already started the 2022 conversation. Even the 2027 conversation is already started. Fair enough. Let's analyze some of the remarks that Morade made. Of course, we had them in clips, but let's as well talk about them. He says, and I quote, if he, in reference to William Ruto, has an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding yes. with Uhuru Kenyatta, then that was an agreement between the two individuals. He also said earlier that he had a mandate with the president for 10 years, and now he wants another 10 years. It is tenable. I mean, when such remarks come from the deputy, the, the vice chairman of the ruling party. Uh, does it show as well of a crack within the party? Or is it, or should it be treated as a one man speaking for his own? When, when uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and, 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 and William Ruto came together, you need to um, be clear that they came together in the strength of their numbers and their different political parties. Fair enough. They came together and formed a vehicle. And you need to realize that in Kenya, political parties are just vehicles that are able to transit to, 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 to the next elections. Past the next elections, nothing really changes. And that is why in some quarters the conversation has started that probably it's high time for William Ruto to have another political vehicle just in the pocket, just in case. So when they came together, there was some kind of political capitalism. The political capitalism was dispensed after the elections the 2017 elections. Now, going forward... The, um, the, what, what is that political capitalism? The, what, what brings that political capitalism the political, in your, in your own it's, view? It's the numbers. It's the numbers. I mean, I mean, Ruto came with his URP. Uhuru came with his TNA. And other parties joined in. After that, they got into power. Now, that there, there seems to be no roadmap on what to do with that political capitalism. Now, we can only talk for the next 2022. But remember, Uhuru is not going to be in the matrix. 
constitutionally but not but not politically mm -hmm. you, you know you know as per the law that uhuru is not is not um, as the law as it is now mm -hmm. uhuru is not there are talks of constitutional referendum uh, as I well mean, i mean th those are uh, different conversations uh, but uh, the law as it is mm -hmm. when we look at it at the moment is that uhuru is not going to buy again so, so that is what is creating that kind of uh, revolution or that kind of uh, energy which they don't know what to do with because what brought them together is uhuru being the president Past that, now the conversation is starting that how then does uh, William Ruto become the, deputy, the, the next president or not? Mm -hmm. In the best case scenario, in the best case scenario, Uhuru will have gone home with, uh, uh, with, with, with the, his deputy. That is in the best case scenario. Because when they came together, they developed a single manifesto, which they want to achieve during the, these 10 years. So in, in, in the best case is that they would have achieved or not achieved, then at the end of the day, they need to shift out together but since we know how our politics are we know that our politics once one once one person gets off the stage then the other one comes in and that is why we're having this conversation w what is interesting enough is, is that uh, what then happens to these other parties that also joined the, the, the ruling party mm -hmm. remember we had rafael tuju coming in with his i think poor party mm -hmm. we, we had a lot of alliances coming in but we have forgotten that one thing this conversation has achieved is that now the deputy president has come out and said, hey, I'm not ready to be endorsed. If indeed the Jubilee team decides that we are going for uh, some kind of nominations, I'm ready. You saw him making those pronouncements. F fair enough. And this is what he said. He said, and I quote, I am ready to battle with anyone. Let my competitors put on the table what they have done for this country. This sounds on a literal perspective, and ju judging on what he said, as a man who is confident even to go without anybody's backing or endorsement. Is that the case? Exactly. If you see the person of Deputy President, this is a man who went out all guns blazing from the word go. This is a man who will wake up and do a, and do a meeting in Nairobi, go to Kisi and do a rally, go to Bungoma, and end up in Kampala. And this is a man who has developed some kind of confidence in what he does, in that every day he's out there trying to woo the people. He's not shied away from saying that he wants the top job. And that is why you saw uh, when he hosted some, some people at his Sugoi home, mm -hmm. he came out and said in the, re the, the way people are talking that he's waiting to be endorsed, he's not ready for that. Fair, fair enough. I understand we need to go for a short commercial break. But before we go, that, before we go for that break, is it therefore possible, can Deputy President William Ruto do away and be still politically of significance, him alone, without Jubilee? Yes. Who's banking or who's then push will he need? Once Murade made those statements and other statements that have been coming from the central uh, side, the people around the deputy president now started thinking on how they can be able to be of relevance alone. And that is why you've seen the deputy president every day, be it in Mombasa, be it in Western, be it in Kisi, he's trying to create a clout of his own away from the Jubilee ruling party. Fair enough on that not. We are taking a short break here on Weekend Express. When we come back from the break, we'll talk matters as well of Murad's remarks and, of course, what he said in regards to Western region and when he met the Western leaders. Don't go too far. We'll be back after this break.